Please, Pavel. Uh, hello. So my topic is mostly concerned with the current state of different enhancement mechanism of high harmonic generation, and in, especially in laser plasma. While definitely in atomic gases, similar processes most can sometimes be uh, seen. And let me describe the four major enhancement approaches for plasma described in detail by Professor Ganif before. And you see that there is resonant HEG. This is also an extraction from some molecular target from another article. So we even have something in molecular component plasma. But and you see enhancement in two color HEG. Look at the inset B, and you see that enhancement is quite significant. You also see that quasi-phase matching can be considered quite an independent way to enhance high harmonic and nanoparticles are the least studied, all of them, and the main problem with nanoparticles is still that it's quite difficult to simulate them. So, my idea within this presentation is the same, uh, that two-color HEG uh, ask some questions to the fundamental nature of the process of laser matter interaction. And despite very simplified uh, view on the problem of high harmonic generation, it's not that simple. And it touches even some unconventional quantum mechanical theories, which, however, have a very long and interesting history. Uh, so let me start from resonant HEG. I demonstrate the same slide as Professor Ganev, but I want to demonstrate that at the moment, resonant HEG in a single color field is more or less uh, described correctly. And starting from the pioneering work of Strelkov, we can describe a lot of useful properties and some of them can even be derived ab initio. But, uh, but what we can observe in such calculations is that initially so if they required addition of extra potential term which has no realistic explanation except of being some so-called metastable state but in a single eta active electron description this state has to be introduced artificially and still it gives very interesting results which correspond to experiment very well we can also do quantum mechanical simulation if we just add some uh, approach with imaginary units uh, called complex absorbing potential uh, and so we can go deeper and understand what happens. It has been soon described that collective oscillations indeed play a major role in resonant high harmonic generation, leading in some peculiarities and phono resonance type spectra. What that means is it's not about only four step process. It's not enough to populate some highly lying state. We must also have some laser induced, also some stimulated radiation, approximately at the same time scale. So fluorescence won't do. We cannot wait for the state to decay. So it can easily be shown that Suppose we have one continuous state that is some harmonic with an energy and some excited state that can in principle be occupied. We consider this uh, channel B uh, opposite to continuum state channel A. I will not even state that channel B is indeed bound into continuum. For us, it's sufficient that channel B has the same energy level and so those oscillations can be more or less coupled. And it can be proven if we sum the probabilities of simulated absorption and emission that channels may interfere and thus we can completely suppress absorption or in total over the, at that energy level. However, there, there will be some emission from that level because emission has different channel of decay. So it has been indeed proven starting from works of Strelkov and some 
my own research and that indeed we have fender resonances and hg resonant generation is very similar to what we have in raman lasers and lasers without inversion otherwise there wouldn't be even a suitable explanation now we go to a second way to enhance high harmonic and then all the beautiful theory ceases to function because it becomes very difficult to explain such simple things well we just can say that really breaks the symmetry and then we can go further but actually it's difficult to find out what act what indeed results in such generation of the uh, odd harmonics or maybe some different frequency it has been fortunately shown by some outstanding experiments of professor ganev that we only have summation and addition of a very weak photon of another frequency only one photon not many of them so from all processes the weak field only adds one photon and this photon intensity is in fact much more much less intense than anything considered in the early stage of two color hd research and we can even check those articles in more detail and we see that the enhancement of energy is just additional energy of the second frequency of the field so we just think that consider this energy uh, 0.25 is actually the intensity is the same because the frequency is two times higher so going to Planck relation we get some questions which must be answered for to color hg so we can see that indeed we can generate even harmonics and maybe some different processes which are only stokes and anti-stokes components no more no further anti-stokes uh, induced anti-stokes non-linear anti-stokes uh, so we can see that we have much much smaller overlap we have much much smaller intensity of the second harmonic in the active region and still we have significant magnifications of the spectrum and what's more important the overall hg yield is achieved so let's check what actually makes such stokes and stokes states to appear well we can consider first well let me go further we can consider hamiltonian which is per periodic in time and it can be easily proven by flocage theorem that such hamiltonian has a complete set of eigenfunctions expressed as Fourier components of all its frequencies so definitely definitely if we give second harmonic then the spectrum itself that is eigen energies spectrum will definitely change and it will in fact include odd harmonic or more importantly some sorry even harmonics and also some stokes and stokes components if the spectral the <coughs> composition is not of uh, not commensurable so this is something what is makes making the components by why do we have enhancement sometimes and do not have enhancement in other cases and why sometimes in indium we have very good enhancement but in other laser plasmas we cannot reproduce it under any conditions and now we look deeper into the process of that lasing without inversion and we see that those states which are coupled have no actually have very little intersection in most cases that's what is you call conical intersection and there is no process the process uh, moving electrons from level two on that rightmost slide to level three is quite slow sometimes and when we add the second frequency we change the symmetry of the system indeed but in addition to difference in eigen frequencies spectrum uh, we can i can say spectrum we have also modification of possible ways to make a transition and our problem suddenly becomes two-dimensional especially in the case of orthogonal polarization i must also tell that 
the derivation of very simple and beautiful relations of four-step process, let me go back, is something that's based on a deep quantum theory of uh, resonances. And this theory is a bit specific. It has been first introduced by Gamow in uh, 1928 and it includes some dissipation within Hamiltonians. I intentionally removed most of the expressions to make the presentation simpler, but what we must know is that in the result, we have a few foundations. We have indeed change of parity of Hamiltonian, and we have some extra states, and the system is actually not uh, P invariant. And then we realize that our Hamiltonian is also non-Hermitian then. And what we have a similarity between dissipating system resonances, which are also not uh, P invariant, but they are P T invariant. I mean, P is parity symmetry, T is time symmetry. And in the end, we arrive to two types of theory. So we can say, that for an absorbing system, not presented here, we can derive some expressions which can, one, be described with uh, Hermitian Hamiltonians, and the second will be described by just PT symmetric Hamiltonians. And while the energy levels are the same, we can construct equivalent Hamiltonians. The dynamics is not the same. So we can further investigate two-color HEG in the framework of PT invariant quantum mechanics and field theory. Even at such low intensities, we have to use field theory because our trajectories become two-dimensional and it's easier to describe it with complex analysis. Now we just uh, go to HEGQPM. For HEGQPM, still very little is known. Many theorists assume that going phase may be compensating, but if you go and investigate the details of HEG deeper, you check, I will go back to the slide later, that it's not sufficient in our experiments with plasma harmonics to compensate quasi-phase matching of high harmonics. Go phase itself is not sufficient, at least in our experiment. Maybe we definitely can construct such experiments where it can do other types of QPM, but here the geometric phase is not very useful and the intrinsic phase, which is due to movement of electron in free space, is in general harmful. So I can assume that Suppose the surface of ablated plasma also plays a role and allows to establish a plasmon. And then we can try to write some system of multiple quantum jets and solve the gas plasma hydrodynamics equations for them separately and consider the long range action of Coulomb interaction. So suppose we move a set of electrons in one side, then we can try to show that the rest of electrons in the next jet will move in the opposite direction. You know, all the problems with description of HEGQPM is within our attempt to assume that the frequency of plasma oscillation is the same and the phase of this quantum oscillation, uh, the of oscillation of electrons in free electron gaze is actually continuous. But here we can try just to calculate the distance assumptions. And then we go again to a system of coupled and absorbing electrons. So I think that the methods of analysis of complex Hamiltonians may be further used even to explain HEG QPM. So, but this will probably be discussed in other articles. So it should be noted that 
there is a possibility of mixing the different ways to enhance high harmonic. For example, here I just present one graph from publication of Professor Ganev, which shows you that there are some harmonics which can be enhanced if we add second color to plasma of nanoparticles, and those harmonics are much stronger. And here for nanoparticles, we also have to go to a model of free electron gas or even go to simulation of multiple microscopic oscillators. But the idea behind them is still the same. And it can be theoretically proven that a system of coupled oscillators is in fact equivalent to some PT symmetric Hamiltonian with an absorption. Well, so I'd like to stop my presentation here. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, I don't hear. Sorry, there is a problem. So we don't hear you, Rashid. Rashid, yes, you, you, you did not switch on. We cannot hear you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much, Pavel Redkin, for your interesting presentation. Uh, we for sure, if uh, somebody will have some questions uh, a bit later, uh, somebody can ask uh, after the completion of this session. So now.